Hi everyone, this is a podcast interviewing Web3 entrepreneurs, key players uh, uh, in, uh, in the crypto scene. And today we, uh, today I would like to introduce uh, uh, our guest, uh, Gwen, from the Orbiter Finance, one of our portfolio of Skyland Ventures. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Pleasure is mine. Yeah, nice to meet you. So, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, quick dive into the uh, uh, questions for the uh, what are you doing for the Orbiter Finance? And also, like, would like to know about the uh, so what Orbiter Finance is doing for the Web3 domain. Uh, so, the first question is, um, uh, that can you describe like your career journey like specifically for you Gwen uh, and also mm -hmm. like how you entered the web3 market and like uh, also like uh, like how did you join the orbiter finance as well and uh, so like quick wrap up of your history please yeah, sure. I'm happy to share like uh, my personal um, career background with everyone. So yeah, uh, just like a quick go through. My name is Gwen, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm a business development manager at uh, Orbiter Finance, and I have been with Orbiter Finance for almost a year. So yeah, it's been like a really lovely journey since I've been with uh, Orbiter because everyone mm -hmm. is so passionate about their who about their scalability. So yeah, I'm so glad that I joined the right team. And before I jumped into Orbiter Finance, I was a product manager at a uh, digital assets management company. And then um, I had a one year experience as, uh, working as a product manager and then I just uh, jumped into um, Orbiter Finance. So I guess my crypto journey isn't that long compared to some of the other, other experts in this um, industry. But um, I actually started to learn um, blockchain technology um, since I was a still like a graduate. Um, so I was, well, before that, I was an interpreter. So um, I always, you know, to do some um, assignments, you know, related to blockchain. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. why I jumped into this industry because I find it so promising. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my about my personal background. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so, so about the like the team of of the finance. Uh, so, uh, like, when did you like join the Arbiter Finance? And like, maybe it looks like you you see the like how built it the how Arbiter Finance are like structured or like uh, how they do they like growing up uh, in the crypto. So could you explain about uh, like team building history about the Arbiter Finance? Yeah, sure. So uh, we are a team with uh, 21 talents and mm -hmm. uh, um, everyone just, you know, have really, really good backgrounds in uh, blockchain industry. So we have a 16 uh, engineers or uh, developers. Mm -hmm. So most of them, they are um, committed in the uh, smart contract development. So, uh, and we had, uh, we, we have a three in uh, marketing campaign and uh, operation. And also we have uh, some colleagues who, you know, quite excelled in, uh, in product uh, development as well, or the product roadmap design. So yeah, that's like the whole um, structure of the team. So um, I would say like this team is a really young team. Everyone, as I said, er everyone is so passionate about this industry and everyone just, you know, I'm happy to see uh, that, you know, actually everyone is uh, is determined to heading to the to the same direction. So that's like mm -hmm. a really good thing to say um, at this point of stage. So yeah, um, that's like a over really e um, simple overview of the, our team scale. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Thank you. So, um, so like, like, is Orbiter Finance started like few few years ago? Oh, oh we started in twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Okay, so it's not, it's really really like young teams, right? 
Yes, I mean, uh, all these projects in this um, ecosystem, especially in layer two, are quite young, isn't it? Mm -hmm, I so, see, I see. Yeah, um, I mean, that's why we are progressing so fast, because mm -hmm, as I said, yeah. everyone is like a new blood in this team. So, yeah, even though we're still a young team uh, compared to, you know, um, some big companies, uh, we are progressing uh uh you know progressing positively um at the current stage so yeah mm -hmm. i see i see so we'll go on to the next question um so why why did you focus on or like why why your project so why did you, did your projects focus on the uh ethereum ecosystems so and also like uh like what type of importance do like does does your project in the Web3 space? Mm. Uh, that's an interesting question. So, well, in terms of the origin of uh, why we actually actually jumping um, into the Ethereum industry or the layer mm -hmm. two ecosystem uh, to, be, to be specific, it's definitely, um, if we, you know, look from a wider picture, everyone is definitely talking about how to optimize the performance of Ethereum and yeah. how to, you know, uh, uh, improve the scalability of uh, Ethereum as well. And then yeah. that's why, yeah, and that's why compared to layer one, we, we find the layer two, you know, um, has more uh, promising future because it, it actually, uh, especially for rollup, it actually inherits the security of uh, Ethereum mainnet. And also it, have, it, it can um, contain more uh, TPS as well. So that's why we definitely jumped into this um, ecosystem. And another thing um, about the uh, layer two and the um, the uh, uh, roll up ecosystem, uh, as I said, is definitely about TPS as well. So mm -hmm. uh, let's say let's to do um, some uh, math here. Let's say the uh, Ethereum's uh, TPS is around fifteen. So even there is a addition of uh, um, 64 shards the tps is still around 900 so if we compare ethereum to um some other you know uh let's say visa to compare to visa which has really high um commercially uh scalable scalability um in this market so if we compare to that we are far away from that so mm -hmm. that's why everyone just finds oh how can we actually you know, improve the TPS of Ethereum to the level of maybe a Visa of, uh, you know, to compare with Visa to mm -hmm. have that uh, that high of uh, TPS. So uh, that's like another reason. And uh, uh, if you look the development of Ethereum itself, no matter it's for uh, merge or for POS, everyone is definitely heading to the scalability of ethereum so we're trying to make the trilemma uh, to you know to um, yeah. have less yeah less negativity on the decentralization security and scalability so yeah um i would say that's the um that's the most of the reason uh or the major reason why we jumped into a uh, layer two ecosystem i see i see thank you so uh so about orbital finance so yeah i of course know the uh what you're doing so about the uh uh in the web3 space uh but like could you give us like brief overview of uh your product uh and how like it fits into the current market so bridge data data services middle layer yeah, sure. So, um, as we all know, Orbiter Finance is a cross roller bridge in the layer two ecosystem, and we mm -hmm. offer um, instant and uh, cost effective and secure uh, cross roller transactions. Well, from a, I would say, from a wider uh, picture of the definition of uh, Orbiter Finance that we would like to have is definitely the ultimate solutions that optimize the performance of uh, Ethereum by supporting cross roll up transactions, which is Orbiter Finance, and synchronizing mainnet and roll up inter uh, interoperabilities. So that's our final target as well. So um, 
I would say like three major um, major uh, features, uh, as I mentioned earlier, which is fast and cheap and uh, secure uh, of mm -hmm. orbit of, of uh, orbiter finance. So um, let's start from uh, uh, the time efficiency, which is fast. So uh, as you probably, I'm not sure if you uh, used Orbiter before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I've tried it uh, also like for the like L2 to L2 bridges. So which is mm -hmm. really, really uh, difficult to do. So uh, for like, for example, for the other like uh, bridging protocol, right? So it's it's one of the like a really really uh like strong point uh of the uh, orbital finance right yeah so um probably have you uh i mean from a user experience the um time that you yeah yeah, yeah. it's pretty yeah, fast, you, fast right yeah you do a cross roll up transaction is normally within 10 to 20 seconds because the transactions on orbital finance is between uh two ue address and that's yeah. how we can guarantee you know the fast uh, transactions uh, between these two addresses, and another thing about the uh, about the security features. So first of all, we are a cross roll up, as I highlighted over and over again. So uh, we actually inherit the security features of a roll up, so we don't have to worry about the you know uh, about the uh, verification process. So it's because it's all has you know inherits the same process as roll up. And another thing is that uh, we do have a uh, security mechanism within, uh, which is called uh, arbitration system. So arbitration system is uh, actually where the sender can initiate the uh, the arbitration case once they haven't received their um, assets on the destination network within a reasonable period of time. So uh, let's say if you don't receive your um, assets on the destination network and then you just uh, let's say you can just uh, go through to the arbitration process and then three smart contracts are deployed in the arbitration system and that's how we can guarantee this whole um, arbitration system is uh, decentralized and uh, secured and also another thing i'd like to highlight is that a uh, the maker uh, which is us at the moment so the maker has to uh, deposit the access margin in the smart contract. Mm -hmm. So, which means that the access margin is normally a uh, hundred times higher than the actual transaction amount. So, uh, the maker wouldn't have any motivation to, you know, to do some malicious behavior on the destination network. So, that's why we can guarantee the hundred percent of the user's assets security. Another thing in terms of the, um, you know, the uh, cost effective, um, I would say uh, probably um, you have noticed that we are the cheapest uh, um, bridging services in this market because, um, as I said, it's uh, no small contractor were, um, were deployed in the transaction process, but only the arbitration process. So, yeah, that's how we can guarantee this, uh, this we can provide, you know, the best user experience. Mm -hmm, I see. I see. So, uh, I understand that like the the bridging protocol between layer two to layer two is really really uh, technically challenging or like difficult. I guess so. Uh, that's that is uh, like your like core technology, right? Uh, so, so yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what do you mean layer two to layer two? You mean cross roll up? Isn't yeah, cross roadmap. So, mm -hmm. like for example, other competitive, like competitive player, uh, like uh, offer us to like cross chain roadmap, but uh, but it is like like between optimistic to optimistic or uh, zk to zk. It, it's like sometimes it's it's not like support. They 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 didn't support it the like zk to optimistic or uh like other layer two to layer two so uh so it's kind of difficult issues for the uh normal cross-chain rollup i guess and the cr uh, cross-chain uh bridge i guess yeah um that's why um uh, we have been highlighted to the you know to the market and to the uh user is that we are not a cross-chain uh bridge yeah we yeah 
roll up bridge because um if you are a cross chain uh bridge i'm not sure if you ever heard about the um bucket effect that like the mm -hmm. famous bucket effect so if you are a cross chain you have to actually suffer or you have to face that 51 percent of the uh of the security risk that might mm -hmm. be happening during the process while well, in terms of the uh, cross roll up you don't actually have to face the bucket effects so we can guarantee like the every aspect of the transaction process is you know highly guaranteed so yeah uh that's why um i would say we're quite competitive in terms of the um security compared to some other um competitors mm -hmm. i see i see okay so yeah uh could also, I'd like to know more about the the like upcoming your challenges uh, about the L layer to middle layer projects. Uh, so that like Orbiter is currently working on, right? Um, so please like let let us know like what what like what are you doing for the layer to middle layer L to middle layer? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, quite happy to share the um, aggregated middle layer to everyone mm -hmm. because uh, we are um, quite famous or, uh, you know, uh, well accepted, known as a uh, uh, cross roller bridge. But um, that is not the final target or the mm -hmm. ultimate target of the whole um the, of the product development, um, I would say. Um, so our um, our uh, roadmap as a whole is definitely to improve the TPS and uh, uh, ultimately uh, optimize the performance of the Ethereum. So uh, I would say cross roller bridge is definitely the first phase, and it's like the step soon for our. Um, second phase and then for the second phase ZK Prover will be probably um, if everything goes well probably will be able to meet everyone at the end of this year mm -hmm. so um, ZK Prover is uh, as I said is uh, trying to um, you know aggregate all the ZKPs from uh, ZK rollups by adopting zero knowledge and also we have um, you know aggregate the um, uh, transactions from uh, individual users or uh, AA wallets by uh, zero knowledge as well. So by doing that, we can actually improve the uh, TPS by uh, 90%, which is quite um, decent, I would say. So um, that's how you can, you can see that, uh, you know, from the, uh, from the first phase that we're trying to build is definitely, first of all, to collect the transactions uh, from the Orbiter Bridge and then to, uh, I would say, like a so sort of laying a foundation for the ZK Prover as well. And then another thing is that uh, re we realize that EO, a uh, transactions between UAs might not be the ultimate solutions. Where, whereas if you look a uh, look at the AA uh, technology, it's definitely mm -hmm. uh, way cheaper than the uh, UAE, uh, UAE address. So uh, that's why we would like to, um, you know, to fin finalize or um, ultimately progress the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, orbiter finance as a whole. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Thank you. So, like, so you mean you're like about the ZK prover or like middle layer? So you are using the like AA technology, right? So uh, yeah, is that's a key point for the this project as well. Yeah, well, we will be using uh, zero knowledge for sure, and ZK Snarks and uh, the uh, AA technology as well. Mm -hmm. Actually, so it's like a, it's a really like a common key concept for the uh, Web three space, right? So, uh, yeah. must be really uh, uh, more convenient for the user ex for users, and also uh, in terms of speed and also like yeah, TPS, I guess so. Uh, yeah, because um, for user, I mean, the the point that hits right into the core is definitely about the uh, the cost efficiency because mm -hmm. it will be cheaper than it is now. And then for like the whole um, scalability or interoperability as a whole, I would say um, because we can, you know, uh, 
um, facilitate all the real-time communications between roll-ups mm -hmm. and mean that, mean that um, in real time. So that's like another highlight of uh, Zika Prover. I see, I see. Thank you so much. No worries. So, yeah. Let me, yeah, this is a final question for you. Uh, so could you explain like your future plans, your project's future plans of for the Orbiter Finance? So so how, what is it like a future blueprint of the Orbiter Finance? Do, do you, like if you like finish the uh, like ZK Prover or like your upcoming projects, maybe Orbiter Finance will, will spread out over and over uh, on the web street space i guess so yeah let me, yeah let you know uh, let me know like your your blueprint about that yeah um that's quite a, a good question because every everyone when they talking about their um projects future is definitely you know so passionate mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so positive as well. So, um, I mean, I'm an on ex um, exception as well. So, um, I would say in terms of the product uh, roadmap I shared uh, just now, I would like to say uh, in, terms, in terms of the market campaign or business development roadmap, uh, we will, you know, um, have you know, definitely carry out more campaigns with some other dApps uh, in the layer two ecosystem because we've already conducted some uh, really good campaigns and that definitely caused a really um, obvious user growth for us. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that's one thing why I would like to uh, constantly have um, all these uh, operations and uh, uh, marketing campaigns to the users because they can um, get some uh, benefits from that as well. And then uh, in terms of the business development roadmap, I would say we definitely will go for some uh, uh, like uh, uh, big conferences. And mm -hmm. uh, we, we went to the um, Adicom uh, conferences in Montenegro this year, which is quite inspiring. We can see all the, um, you know, top notch technologies and all the talented people just to gather together and talk about the uh, future of Ethereum, which is quite um, exciting for everyone. So uh, even though I'm not, you know, that uh, technical, but mm -hmm. um, you can you can definitely see like the you will believe the future of uh, Ethereum. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So definitely joining in this kind of um, conferences will be another uh, big step of us as well. So yeah. Um, that's like the product and uh, marketing and uh, the operation size of uh, a um, uh, roadmap. So I hope that answer your question. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. So yeah, today's guest was is Gwen from the Opta Finance. Thank you so much uh, for coming on our podcast, YouTube. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me.